today we're we'll talking about what went down at the Crocal Open and why it highlighted a major issue on tour. This video is sponsored by PowerGrip USA, so if you want great plastic and save 10% off your order, use code WILDRUNS10 at checkout. And before we get to FPO and MPO, I gotta say, this is such an amazing return to form. I love European courses, and I love this particular course so, so much. And you can definitely tell they improved upon it from last year, and it leads me to this major issue that we need to address on tour. Everyone playing in these European events knows how interesting and engaging and fun these courses are. There are so many unique shot shapes that require specific lines, and there is almost zero gimmick to this entire course. And it almost feels like the perfect disc golf course. Which leads me to the major issue that I have on tour, US courses. There are so many courses again and again that have not been dropped from tour that continue to bore me and so many other viewers. There are a seemingly endless amount of golf courses that we continue to bring back on tour. And even in Kristen's practice round, she was like, oh wow, I love this. This is awesome. We don't get any of this in the first stretch of the US courses. And if she's willing to say that, then I think it is pretty obvious that everyone feels this way. We want courses like these European courses, but it seems to always come down to reception, good camera angles, and a good fan experience. I get that all these are important, but so many times on tour, we lose sight of what truly matters most quality disc golf. And I don't want to name any specific courses, but there are so many courses that have been a legacy on tour and they need to be dropped, especially when you have so many phenomenal courses in the US and it could easily fit in the tour schedule. It would just obviously mean that other courses have to get dropped. So please disc golf pro tour. I really want to see an effort made to drop these legacy courses that do not exemplify what true professional disc golf looks like. All right, starting with FPO, it was incredibly exciting to see how Kristen will fare with her first event back on tour since Champions Cup. And if you have not already, highly recommend watching the MDG with Silver and Kristen. I think it was just such a very honest and real take that we don't get to see that much from Kristen. But before we get to Kristen's battle versus Silva, just want to highlight some players that don't typically get spotlight. First one being Lina, just such a fun player to watch. And I still catch myself being like, is that Fakus? No, it is the Finnish Fakus. And while she did not fare the best in the final round and had 12 total OBs, she was really showing how competent she is at these very tight lines and capitalizing on so many birdie putts, missing just one circle one putt in the final round and then only missing a couple of putts in the first couple rounds as well. While she did finish out of the podium in fourth place, it's still very exciting to see that performance. And a player that probably should have taken the podium, Annika Sten, besides the top two players, seemed like the obvious third place finisher, playing playing so well as the only Norway native in contention. But again, OBs really took the wind out of her sail with four OBs to finish the final round, but still so many good putts and drives along the way, making a clear reminder that winning Texas States was not an anomaly. But a player that you probably did not expect to take third place, and I'm going to for sure butcher this, Tujas Meniste <laughs> takes third place without any seemingly great performance throughout the entire tournament besides a turkey to finish it out, which allowed her to snag third place. But the real battle all along was Kristen versus Silva. With Silva taking the early three-stroke lead after round one, it looked like there might be potential for Kristen to actually fall short. But Kristen, being the unstoppable force that she is, goes seven under on round two, whereas Silva only went four under. And honestly, it didn't feel like Kristen's game was like remarkably good, but she really is just so consistent that even when her game looks to be like just average, that is still way above the rest. And so they finished round two tied at 10 under. And the final round was definitely a war of attrition with a torrential downpour pouring down the entire round. And honestly, this was a fair battle the entire way through. There was a couple of points where I thought Silva didn't look the most on top of her game. And throughout the first couple of holes, it looked like Kristen actually might be a little bit off with Kristen taking a bogey on hole three, hitting an early tree. And then on hole four, she had a super uncommitted shot that went way left in the trees and Silva took a birdie, giving Silva a two stroke swing. But after that point, it looked like Kristen's whole demeanor flipped and she was lights out the entire way through, leaving basically no room for Silva to mess up. Getting a turkey on holes five, six, seven, and then Silva cards some very unfortunate bogeys on hole seven and eight. And so after the front nine, it looked like it was probably a done deal. Like, you know, Kristen is gonna dominate. And it definitely seems like the rib injury is a thing of the past because it did not seem to affect her, especially in this final round. So they both start their back nine with a couple of birdies and then Kristen just basically pars out putting her at 16 under but then nothing was working for Silva she was having some early releases from hole 13 on she went out of bounds four times and just never seemed like anything was clicking for her which obviously is very understandable with so much rain making it much more of a grueling mental battle which you have to have experience for if you really want to dominate so with that she ends the back few holes with four bogeys finishing around at even putting her six stroke 
looks back of Kirsten Tatar. And overall, I love Silva's putt. I love the way that she throws so precisely, so quickly. But I think this final round was a definite demonstration that she was rushing it a little bit. And it felt like she left a lot of distance out there when she really needed to gain some strokes on Kristen. So even though, in my personal opinion, Kristen did not play the best disc golf, doesn't matter, she won the event and it shows how high her ceiling truly is. And here's what she had to say. I try not to think, just to play disc golf. And I got a little bit fr frustrated on like hole four or five. I just said to myself to not be so hard on myself. So if I'm not succeeding in the rain, it's okay. Uh, but it's a paradox. Then my all my shots seem to be very good. Feels so on brand for Kristen. Just don't overthink it. Don't be too hard on yourself, which you definitely need on a course and day like this when it is so grueling and so difficult to manage all your emotions and all these scary wet putts that could roll way deep into the OB. So although we did expect Kristen to dominate and dominate she did, still a great performance from Silva and I'm excited to see how she does in the European Open. Next up, Joey Buckets. Honestly, I cannot believe how much of a dominant force he truly is in Europe. I don't know what kind of drug he's on, but I certainly want some. And besides an early triple in round two, he carded 12 birdies from that point on, going three for five on C2 putts and only missing one C1 putt. Now the final round was still a great display of his dominance, but carding four bogeys really put him back out of actually winning it, but he still finishes in a very respectable fourth place. And honestly, he could definitely be one of those low-key players that could take down the European Open. And in very much the same vein, Vinyl Makala showing everyone how much happier and better he seems to be playing as an end of a sponsored player. After a solid 10 under in round two, putting him tied for second place, you could just tell how much happiness was emanating from him. And basically just like Joy Buckets, he finishes with about the same number of birdies in round two. Now, although he was definitely never in contention of winning with an early double on hole three, he still felt like he was playing strong. And maybe it's just because I'm not really looking for it, but I don't feel like Vino has been in contention for that many events, especially recently. And basically his best finish this year was 13th at the chess.com invitational. So coming out here with a very very strong third place finish is a great trend that I hope to see more of. And before we get to the top two contenders, two names I want to point out just a little bit would be Paul Macbeth and Nicholas Antela. Feeling like a bit of a broken record, but I know Paul Macbeth and Nicholas have the potential to win every single one of these events. So whenever they do fall a little short, I am just a little bit surprised. Now with that said, Nicholas did finish in fourth and Paul finished in sixth, which I will not say is a bad finish, but with them being 11 strokes behind the champion, I would say this is still not a great finish. But I think for whatever reason, whether that be win conditions, this final round proved to be much, much harder than the first two. But besides their games looking generally pretty good, and Paul's throwing motion looking to be pretty much what I expect it to, at least for his current fitness and what you would kind of expect, given that he's going to be practicing a little bit less, I think it is still looking really strong. But for Nicholas, I feel like there was just a couple of holes that really destroyed him, and they definitely seem to be at the end of the round. With round two going OB four times in the last couple of holes, carding a bogey, bogey double, and then finishes with an insane 100 foot throw in for Eagle. But the real killer was hole 18 on the final round. Sure, he was not really in contention of winning, but he definitely seemed to be the hard set favorite for third place. And then he airballs his putt for par, going right into the out of bounds and cards the double, which put him in fourth place. And speaking of disasters on hole 18, Gannon Burr and Anthony Barilla both fared the same fate, with AB taking a double and Gannon Burr taking a triple. Definitely not the way you would want to end this event, but I still think they probably feel alright with the bigger event obviously being European Open, but still just insane to see the best players still fall short in these challenging holes that require such precision. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you have gotta will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man, unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. But going to the real battle, it was Jakub Simarad versus Ricky. And obviously starting the round with a seven stroke lead, are you kidding me? There seems to be no way you could give that up. And basically that was the case, but there was still so much phenomenal disc call from Jakub that I cannot understate. With them both carding bogey free rounds and Ricky ending the entire tournament bogey free, this was some of the best disc golf I have seen in recent history. And to go along with it, there are so many tight lines and so many death putts. And even if it's not a death putt, it could still roll but with both of them being phenomenally good putters, it was never an issue. And I feel like the stats aren't quite right, but it says that Ricky and Jakub didn't make a single circle two putt, which maybe is true, but it did not feel like it. There were so many putts that Jakub had to save in order to stay a couple strokes behind Ricky. And he just kept on persevering. And let me just rattle off some of these circle one putts, which may not sound impressive, but it really was. 26, 32, 26, 29, 29. And besides a couple of holes with some early tree hits, I would say the only mistake 
mistake that Yakub truly had was an OB on hole 13. For an uphill circle one putt, this is probably the most difficult because you have so much wind that you have to contest with, but he jams it in with the cleanest looking putt. Look at this in! Out of the basket, getting pulled back in. And I truly think these might be some of the best putters we have on tour. So to see them battle it out on such an epic course was just so fun to watch. But with them seemingly battling every hole birdie for birdie, there was basically no room for Yakub to catch up. So although Yakub did finish his final round at 10 under, which is a 1081, he falls short to Ricky by five strokes, leading to Ricky's second Pro Tour win of the year and his seventh podium finish. All in all, this is definitely one of those events where Ricky did not look stressed for a single moment. There was definitely moments where it looked like a got a little close, but Ricky did not show any fear, and even when he hits an early tree, he still manages to save pars. So ending the tournament with the highest birdie percentage and not getting a single bogey makes it pretty obvious as to why he won. But we know Ricky is a beast, so obviously I would say the bigger story here is how truly dominant Jakub really was. With his putter looking great, so many drives that looked effortless, it really felt like this was some of the best disc golf we've got to see from him. And I know he has had so many good finishes on the European side that as us US fans, we probably don't get to see as much, so I really enjoyed getting to see him truly battle against Rick. But I would say despite them both kind of dominating this weekend, I would not put them in my podium finishes for next week, but I cannot wait to see how it does fare for everyone at the European Open. A couple birdies, I knew every birdie that I got was uh, gonna be harder for the field to catch me. So yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's getting harder and harder and I'm, I I love a challenge. So I, I love the competition. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm almost thankful for it. It, ma it makes me play better. Be sure to subscribe and I really appreciate all the love and support I got in my recent videos. And if you are in the market for some new plastic, be sure to go down to Power powergripusa.com and use code wildruns10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. With that, Wild Runs, signing out, peace.